மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் சேனல் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் அருணா சண்முகவேல் லெட்டர் சி எ மோட்டிவேஷனல் கோட் சம்டைம்ஸ் இட் இஸ் பெட்டர் டு பி குவாய்ட் தேன் ப்ரூவிங் அதர்ஸ் தட் யுவர் ரைட் In this video, we are going to learn about the ossification and clinical anatomy of occipital bone. The occipital bone shows both membranous and cartilaginous ossification. This squamous part above the external occipital protuberance undergoes membranous ossification. One on either sides of midline, ossification centers appear by 8th week of intrauterine life. Soon, they unite to form single center in the midline. The squamous part below the external occipital protuberance undergoes cartilaginous ossification. The two ossification centers for lower part of squamous part appear by 7th week and soon they unite. By 12th week of intrauterine life, the upper and lower parts of occipital bone unites. There are two centers for occipital condyles and they appear by 8th week of intrauterine life. The occipital condyles unite with the lower squamous part by 2nd year of life. There is one ossification center for the basilar part and that appears by 6th week of intrauterine life. The basilar part unites with the occipital condyles by 6th year of life. The parts which develop by cartilaginous ossification are lower part of squamous part of occipital bone below external occipital protuberance, occipital condyles, basilar part. The squamous part above highest nuchal line may remain separate throughout life and is known as interparietal bone or bone of Kirkring. Remember, the squamous part fuses with the condylar part at the end of second year when the milk dentition is complete. The condylar part fuses with basilar part at the sixth year of life when the permanent dentition begins to erupt. The basic occiput fuses with basis phenoid at the 25th year when the permanent dentition is complete. Thus, the backward elongation of the palate to accommodate the teeth is matched by a compensating growth of the skull base to keep the nasopharynx patent. Right. Now, let us see some clinical significance of occipital bone. In vertex presentation of fetus, position of the encaged head within the pelvic cavity is classified based on the position of occipital bone. Left occipital anterior position is the commonest and best for the fetus to pass through the birth canal. The synchondrosis joint between basis phenoid and basic occiput becomes synastosis at the age of 25. This is a medical legal important fact to remember. Trauma to the occiput can cause a fracture of the base of the skull called basilar skull fracture. The basion dense line is the distance between the basion and and the top of the dents used in the diagnosis of dissociation injuries. The external occipital protuberance can be of three different types, smooth, crest form or spine form. If it is an exaggerated external occipital protuberance, then it is called as occipital knob or occipital bun or chignon or inion hook or exostosis. This exaggeration is a frequent finding among males and hence a prominent occipital spur is often used in gender determination in forensic investigations. 
children who use the devices with their head tilted down and poor posture also may result in bone spur because of increased stress on the skull from attached structures shall we end up the session with a motivational quote be happy not because everything is good but because you can see the good side of everything thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon select all to get instant notification Thank you.